I have appreciated Costa for three main things over the 35 years I have known him. The first is his participation in the creation of Diana. I could, I could elaborate on this, but I'm pretty sure this is not the right thing. The second, he was an incredible example to me about how to be big enough, strong enough, and smart enough to accomplish everything you desired and say, I have enough. And I am happy with what I have. I could elaborate on this too, but I think his life speaks for itself. The third is his craftsmanship, construction knowledge, and ability. This is the one I want to talk about. For me to do this, I need to start from the beginning. Uh, Costa and my beginning. Costa got to know me before he knew who I was. You see, I started. You see, before I started dating his daughter, Diana, I was waiting for her to come home after she had been gone for a year in Europe. I was not in touch with her as she was traveling, so I did not know when she would be come back to San Diego. Thinking it would be soon, I wanted to let her know I was thinking about it. So every three weeks or so, for about three months, I would leave a postcard in her parents' mailbox. The postcard was a collage I put together that included a picture of me. There were no words, just some high school art with a picture of me. When Diana got home, I asked her if she received the postcards. She said, no, not one. So I knew Costa had seen the pictures of me many times, and many times she had thrown them all out. So when I finally met this giant guy, whose hand, when I shook it, made my hand disappear, I was a little nervous. He had a look on his face. His head was pulled back, he had a sheepish smile appeared on his face, and his eyes were raised up like he was telling Diana, I told you so. <laughs> this look on his face, I interpreted to me, I recognize this little guy, I'm not sure where I recognize him from, he has stupid looking long hair, I don't think I want him dating my daughter, and I don't like him. <laughs> Later, I think I learned what he was actually thinking. Over the years, I learned, over the, over the years, he learned that I was an architect, and he accepted me to the family, telling me, you think what you do is hard, you should try doing what I do. I actually build what you can only draw. <laughs> For heaven's sake, he knew I was a contractor. I really wanted to impress him. I wanted to show him that I was big enough and strong enough and skilled enough to work next to him on the job site and worthy of marrying his daughter. On and off for several years, I would get Costa to help me with my construction projects. He was big and super strong, like so strong that it is a good thing he was not a Viking strong. He was also incredibly skilled at construction. He learned construction in the old country and handed tools, using hand tools and learned how to use all the power tools here in the USA. He was a carpenter who specialized in concrete forms, but he did the tile, plumbing, electrical stucco work on our house. He also did all the metal work to craft the machines in front of you in the center of the tables. These machines were all made from repurposed material, metal, wire, motors, and gears. He never purchased a thing for them. Almost every time I worked next to him, <laughs> next paragraph, Almost every time I worked next to him, that look on his face His head pulled back, the sheep of smile showed up, and his eyebrows raised like I told you so. I thought he was saying, this little guy with the stupid looking long hair, I don't think I want him dating my daughter, look, would eventually show up on his face. But I showed him, I was bald, passed my architecture license exam, and married his daughter. <laughs> That look kept showing up. 
One day, Klaus and Veronica came over. Veronica would help Bjorn in the kitchen make lunch and her cookies, and we were pouring concrete for some stairs at our house. He would fill the wheelbarrow up to the top, easily lift it up, push it up the driveway, go through the narrow doorway, make a sharp right turn, and deliver the concrete into the forms he had built. After he carried several loads of concrete into the forms, I grabbed hold of the wheelbarrow and wanted to give him a break and show him I was big enough, strong enough, and skilled enough to carry the wheelbarrow up to the forms. It all went well. I went up the driveway, through the garage, through the narrow door, and then came the sharp right turn. The sharp right turn. I struggled with all my strength right in front of Casa to hold the wheelbarrow, but I was not big enough, strong enough, or skilled enough. Over went the concrete, half in the form, half out of the form, and the weight of me and the wheelbarrow falling on the form broke the forms. I'm almost done. <laughs> Covered in concrete, I looked at Acosta and looked to see the look on his face. Head pulled back, sheepish smile, and eyebrows raised like I told you so. I thought he was saying, this little guy with the bald head, why did my daughter marry me? <laughs> then he said something. It was hard to understand with his accent. But he did not say you were too small, too weak, and not skilled enough to be working next to me. I think he said, with a look on his face, head pulled back, sheep a smile, and eyebrows raised, like I told you so, look, and he said, maybe you go make cookies with Veronica. <laughs> Is this what he'd been thinking all along? I thought, no shovel, no trowel, no hole in the hose? Can I sweep? No, go make cookies. This became the story of my relationship with Costa. I was not big enough, strong enough, or skilled enough to work next to him, but he always let me back on the job site. Once we poured the foundation for the two-story addition to our home, I had myself and three of my friends well, they were just architect friends. They were there to help Costa with the poor. The work came incredibly strenuous, became incredibly strenuous as Costa insisted on pouring the extra concrete from the truck into the forms so as not to waste any, and the concrete started to harden. So now we started to chisel the overboard from the rebar. Two of my friends just quit and went home. One friend quit in pain when he later learned from what we later learned was a double hernia. And I quit too. You see, you see Veronica needed help making cookies. <laughs> then I tried to go to sleep, but for the rest of the afternoon, I could hear Costa pounding away on the concrete. Last page. Another time we were hanging drywall on the ceiling. He had held up the drywall, he and I held up the drywall over our heads with one hand, and I held up the drywall with the other. I tried to install the screw to hold the drywall up. The screw missed the ceiling joist. I lost my balance and fell off the ladder, landing on my butt with all the nails in my bags falling out. The fall kicked up the drywall dust that we created earlier, and it attached itself to my sweaty face. I looked up, and there was Costa with one hand holding up the drywall, and the other was reaching in his tool bags for a nail showing me he could do this without me, <laughs> while looking at me at the same time, without saying the words, maybe you can make cookies with Veronica. <laughs> there were many more episodes like this. I know Veronica, by her example, takes the credit for my baking. <laughs> but I want to thank Costa because without his size, strength, and construction skills, I would not know how to make cookies. <laughs> I personally lost my ability to communicate with Costa 10 years ago when he decided not to wear a hearing aid. I really wish he had decided to otherwise. From the beginning, he accepted me into the family despite my obvious deficiencies. It was an exa incredible example to me about how to be big enough, strong enough, and skilled enough to accomplish everything he desired, and thankfully, he never actually said out loud, Stephen, maybe you can make cookies with Veronica. <laughs>
David. I'm Elena's husband and I'm his dad. Um, I think there's a couple words that I always think of with Casa. The first one's going to be, and Diana mentioned it, Moshu fix it. Where does that come from? He could fix anything. Even the times when I may have created extra work projects in the house, for example, crawling through the attic and poking a hole through the ceiling. <laughs> Fortunately, he still didn't laugh at me out loud, but I'm sure he was snickering inside. The other one is, but why? For example, we, I think we had a family gathering at our house. We forgot to bring 7-Up. We said, you know, we don't have any 7-Up. But why? <laughs> Another one is when Evan was born, he was very proud. My grandson. This is my grandson. We would go to the family reunion. Evan was there. My grandson. Didn't matter who I was at that point. This is my grandson. He was an amazing man. Um, he welcomed me in to the family. Um, master barbecuer, master smoker. Um, I will probably never come close to what he did. Um, and I won't miss him. Nadia? Thanks all for coming. Um, like my grandfather, I'm going to just say very few words. Uh, but just so many memories of him. Uh, he really pushed us to continue our education and all of his gifts. We're a long back theme, so um, many gifts of like calculators, which I think I became an engineer, so very foreshadowing of that. Um, and then also just like encouraging our interests. So like I really liked languages growing up, and he gave me like a little pocket translator. Um, and so I think he was just always very thoughtful in how he approached all of our being your grandfather. Thank you. I think Abby's gonna be here. Yeah, man, a few words, so I'm hoping to be woman a few words today. Um, maybe fewer than I thought, but um, all I can think about are these massive hands and how much they've done for me. Um, whether it was like he fixed every broken zipper I ever had and um, would sneak me little pieces of barbecue before anyone else was allowed to eat. And um, he would always use them to like shush people if we didn't want to talk in, which is a really happy memory for me. You know, I just constantly do this, just swallowing at people. Um, and he would always wait by no matter how many times we left. Um, and I just hope that I can continue by everything that he gave me. Um, I just want to say how grateful I am to have all of you here. Um, it means a lot to our family that joined us to celebrate Dad. And I did forget, which I was going to do first thing at the cemetery. Now. I think he's hearing still, Dad, I brought the truck. It was here for you. So for those of you know who my dad and his... 2004 Nissan that still has about 25,000 miles on it. That was one of his babies too, and it was there for you, Dad. So, um, wonderful to see you all, and um, just can appreciate each day because we all, um, yeah, we all have an endpoint, and Dad's took me by surprise. So, love you all. So in case you didn't know, there's dessert over there. I know some people have found it, but I want to make sure that everyone knows that there's dessert. And um, so thank you for being here, and um, keep enjoying the afternoon together. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know.